The most painful part of having ALS is thinking about all of the experiences that I don't get to have with my children. I can't chase Carl around the house and make him laugh with silly dances. I can't squeeze little Willow and kiss her head. And I am heartbroken when I think about the decades of joy that I will probably miss out on. I know we share this pain and I cannot imagine what it would be like to lose my children. George Floyd had five children. Breonna Taylor was only 26 and had decades of hopes and dreams ahead of her. But America's commitment to white supremacy stole away those relationships and those futures. The leaders of the movement for black lives believe that we have been trying to reform police departments for many decades and it is not working. Instead, they believe that the solution is to reduce the number of interactions that civilians have with the police. We can reduce the responsibilities assigned to the police and redirect some of the funding for police into social services, mental health counseling, and affordable housing. So for example, instead of sending two police officers with deadly weapons to that Wendy's drive through in Atlanta, we could have sent a wellness counselor and a tow truck, and then Ray's Hard Brooks would still be alive today. And his three daughters would still have their daddy. Are you open to that kind of reform? Yes, I propose that kind of reform. We need significantly more help. That's why I call for significant increase in funding for mental health clinics and mental health pr providers. We are desperately in need of that now. One of the things I've been pushing for in our administration, we put together the ability and a bill that I wrote to make sure that we can look at pattern and practice of police departments, go in and get all the records and find out what they're doing. That's why we're able to stop the stop and frisk in Camden, the stop and frisk in New York City and the rest, where the federal government has the right to go in and, and change systemically what's going on. There's a whole range of things that we can do. The idea of no-knock warrants for drug cases is bizarre. We don't need that. It's, it's just, it just invites trouble. That's how Brianna was killed. There's a need for fundamental change in us being have, able to have transparency, be able to have access to the records of police when they have misconduct charges against them, to be able to know where they are. So they can't go from one police department to the next. That should be held in my administration. That information will have to be made available to the Justice Department and held in a file. So you'll be able to track this. Uh, surplus military equipment for law enforcement. They don't need that. The last thing you need is an up-armored Humvee coming into a neighborhood. It's like the military invading. They don't know anybody. They become the enemy. They're supposed to be protecting these people. So my generic point is but that do we agree that we can redirect some of the funding. Yes, absolutely. One of the things that we also need to be doing is fundamentally changing the way and I've been pushing it for years, changing the way we deal with our prison system. It should be a rehabilitation system, not a punishment system. We're going to make sure that you're qualified for every single right you had before you went to prison if you served your time. And that means that you're entitled to Pell Grants to go to school. You're entitled to job training programs. You're entitled to housing grants. You're entitled to every federal program out there. 